The Office of Congressional Ethics, the independent board that investigates House lawmakers, is getting an overhaul, courtesy of the new House Rules Package passed by Republicans. And opponents of the changes say the Republicans just gutted the Ethics Office. I mean, do they even know what ethics are at this point? Let's bring in the former director of the U.S. Office of Government Ethics, Walter Schaub. Walter, um, talk about some of the worst changes that you found. You've been tracking this. Yeah, at the, office, at the Project on Government Oversight, we and other groups have been really looking at this. The two most concerning provisions are, first, they say in the new rules that all the hiring has to happen within 30 days of the rules package being passed, which means no hiring after that for two years. And then they say that there's a new eight-year limit on service on the board. The board of the Office of Congressional Ethics has to vote to approve any actions. And they have three out of the four Democratic members who've exceeded that limit. So right from the start, uh, you're giving one side a partisan advantage in a group that should be nonpartisan. So ex explain, first of all, ethics enforcement in Congress, how it happens, and how some of these changes actually might get in the way of that. Yeah, well, I think for starters, we have to acknowledge that neither party has distinguished itself on government ethics in Congress. And frankly, government ethics in Congress is absurdly weak. It's it's a ridiculous mm -hmm. process. But the only bright spot in that broken system is the Office of Congressional Ethics, which they created in 2008 to actually do some investigations and then refer anything they found to the Ethics Committee for action. And unlike the Ethics Committee, the Office of Congressional Ethics has been really transparent in publishing its findings. So gutting that office is really going to weaken an already weak system. Jonathan Lemire. So, Walter, good morning. And this comes, of course, as there's talk of George Santos, and there's already been complaints <laughs> that the ethics investigation into him and his repeated lies was going to take a really long time. You're familiar with this. So, first of all, just tell us a little bit, like, what can we can expect? But also, how does the weakening of the office going to impact what Santos may face and repercussions down the road for other lawmakers and their own transgressions? Right. So Santos is facing a few ethics complaints, at least one of them filed by two members who allege uh, improprieties in his financial disclosure filings, which can actually be quite serious because false statements or omissions in a financial disclosure report could lead to criminal or civil penalties. Uh, the Office of Congressional Ethics has 10 professional staff slots, meaning they can hire that many people. They only have six right now, and they need mm -hmm. to do hiring. And it's unlikely they can finish the rest within 30 days. So it's going to really hobble their ability to conduct meaningful investigations. Uh, he'll probably still get investigated. Uh, the House Ethics Committee may or may not take action against him. The House Ethics Committee has been incredibly weak, and McCarthy needs Santos's vote uh, because he's speaker by such a thin margin and could face a recall by his own party. Uh, so I doubt that much will happen. And the real hope is that there'll be an investigation that gives us some transparency. Yeah, that is a hope, Elise. Walter, the stock trading and members of Congress, it's just unbelievable that members of Congress can freely trade stock, their spouses, their close relatives. Why can Spanberger's bill not get anywhere in Congress to ban congressional stock trading? Yeah, this is a perfect example of the congressional ethics failures because it's not a partisan issue. You have Republicans and Democrats backing uh, Abigail Spanberger's uh, congressional stock trading bill, and you have Republicans and Democrats opposing it. It tends to fall along wealth lines. Uh, and Nancy Pelosi last year absolutely refused to give Abigail Spanberger's vote a bill, uh, a vote on her bill. Uh, and then this year, Kevin McCarthy had promised action in the House rules banning congressional stock trading, and we saw that didn't happen. So you sort of have a conspiracy at the top of both parties to prevent any meaningful conflict of interest rules in Congress. And I'm just happy to see that Spanberger and her allies on both sides of the aisle are going to keep fighting for this, because her bill is one that really should pass. And I'm, you know, we're going to keep fighting for it this year. 
Walter Schaub, thank you so much for coming on this morning. He's former director of the U.S. Office of Government Ethics and now senior ethics fellow at the nonpartisan watchdog group, The Project on Government Oversight.